What's good everybody? Welcome back to Cadillac Cartoons and today I'm going to show you how to draw a beanstalk in three point perspective. Now if you don't know what perspective is at all, then I'm going to give you a little lesson. So since we're drawing in three point perspective, we'll be working with three vanishing points. So I'm going to use a sharpie to make those points, but for now I'm going to take my ruler, this is a 12 inch, and I'm going to make the line across my page. That line that I'm about to make is called the horizon line, and it also indicates the eye level line. So just a line that goes straight across the page just like this. And I made it at the bottom of this entire square because when we're drawing in three point perspective, you can do it at either a worm's eye view or a bird's eye view. A worm's eye view means you're on the ground because you normally find a worm on the ground. When you're drawing anything at a worm's eye view, you're looking up at it. So since I drew this eye level line down here at close to the bottom of this square, we'll be doing this tutorial at a worm's eye view. However, if you turn it upside down and the horizon line is at the top of this page, then that would be at a bird's eye view because you're looking at something at the perspective of a bird because you normally find the bird somewhere up in the sky. So normally if you're up in the sky, you'll be looking down at things. But for this tutorial, we're gonna be drawing this at a worm's eye view. So to start off drawing in three point perspective, you're going to need three vanishing points. Two of those vanishing points will lie somewhere on this horizon line. So I'm gonna use my Sharpie and make those points right quick. One point would be right here, also on the line. The other point will be on another part of the line. Now, vanishing point number three, where is that gonna go? So, like I mentioned with worm's eye and bird's eye view, the third vanishing point could go somewhere else along the page. And it can also work the other way if you're doing it at a bird's eye view. So, since we're doing this at a worm's eye view, our third vanishing point can be somewhere over here. Now, I drew this square on the page because I know in advance that the last vanishing point will be somewhere off the page. And that's gonna help us draw our beanstalk. So let's make our third vanishing point somewhere in this general area. So I'm gonna take my Sharpie and just draw that point there. Okay, so now we got one, two, three vanishing points. And now we are ready to get started. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is connect each of these two points with this last vanishing point up here. And I can use my ruler to do just that. Okay, and now we made pretty much a triangle. So now what I'm gonna do is, we're gonna use these two vanishing points down here and we're gonna make an ellipse or an oval. So let's draw an oval down here. So we're pretty much constructing a cylinder, but drawing that in one point perspective when you think about it. So we got our ellipse circle, oval, whatever you want to call it. We got that down here. Now we're going to make this same shape somewhere outside of our square. So we're going to take this oval here and we're going to make a smaller version up here because you see how each end of the ellipse connects with both lines that we drew to connect the vanishing points. We're going to do the same thing up here, but we're going to dilate this shape and make it a lot smaller. like that. So we got one, two ovals. So if I look at a reference picture, any reference picture of a beanstalk, I notice that it has sort of a swirly shape as you go up. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna start with this point. I'm gonna go here. Make sort of like a curved zigzag shape. like so and then we're gonna make that into a plant see how it kind of swirls around the shape that's what we're gonna do throughout now since this comes behind our cylinder we're not gonna draw this portion 
So we're just going to continue up. Okay. So now we can get rid of this line because we don't need it anymore. And now we're going to give the beanstalk somewhat of a bulge to the shape. Because keep in mind, the beanstalk is a plant, so it's not really man-made. So the edges of the beanstalk, when we draw it, is going to have some sort of jagged edges, and that's okay. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to follow each of these perspective lines when drawing the actual beanstalk. But I'm actually going to give it somewhat of a bulge. So as you may notice, I curved in. And then with this line, I could keep it straight, but I'm not going to. So I'm going to take this line off of the curve and add sort of a bulge. Something like this. And then I might just do the same thing on this side. See how it's see how it has some somewhat of a bulge. Okay. And we're gonna provide somewhat of the same thing close to the bottom. But with the bottom portion of the beanstalk, we're gonna do something a little bit different. Not much, but something a little bit different than what we did up here. And then add more of a bulge. So we're pretty much getting rid of all the straight lines that we drew to connect these vanishing points together. We're getting rid of all of that. But to do that, we're not going to be erasing the lines per se because we're using them as a guide because this is at three-point perspective. And it's going to be hard to freelance anything at three-point perspective. So that's why we got the vanishing points, the lines, and our eye level line. So let's add another bulge to the edge. Okay. So now we got the simplicity of our beanstalk done already. So we're going to go back to the bottom right quick and draw just a little hill. So hopefully that won't confuse you with the vanishing points that I made with the Sharpie because at this point I can't erase it. So we're just going to have to, you know, make it work. Okay, so everything below that I can pretty much get rid of. Actually, let me use my eraser. And see, there's nothing left down there. And now let's think about this. So let's say you watch a cartoon that features you know jack and the beanstalk kind of story so as you may notice from that story the beanstalk grew methodically out of the ground throw the beans on the ground the beanstalk just shoots up dead in the air so what i think about when i'm seeing stuff like that i like to add like a little patch of dirt that surrounds the beanstalk so what i'm going to do to draw the dirt is i'm going to take my pencil and use two fingers to do this and you see how my fingers are I'm not sure how to describe it, but one is rolling over the top. And I'm gonna follow the contour of this little hill that we just drew. Because we're trying to give it some jagged edges. Because that's what, you know, that's what dirt looks like. Patch of dirt close to the edge of the page. OK, 
Okay, and now we can get rid of those lines. And then I'm gonna try to follow those same edges. And then just add a few dots help indicate that that's dirt okay and then while we're still down here I can just add a few blades of grass here and there grassy hill kind of feel and then I might just add it on the shape of the hill okay so we got the grassy hill the dirt and now let's add some details to our beanstalk. Now let's take a look at this little point right here. It looks as if the parts of the beanstalk are kind of squeezing it together. And this may be odd to say, but let's think about fashion design and drapery. If you're doing an art study with like drapery, you may notice that an area that looks like this looks like a tension spot. I like to call them a tension spot. But like, let's say you're drawing wrinkles and ruffles or whatever, an area that looks just like this would be considered a tension spot. So we can add wrinkles to that portion of the beanstalk. And we can add it at the top too, just to help give it some extra detail. See how we added just a few lines to add some more detail? We're gonna do that throughout our drawing. But let's say a lot of the wrinkles on the beanstalk are coming from this little uh, spiral strand, I guess we wanna say. They can be coming from that little strand. So I can draw wrinkles close to that area coming away. And then the same deal up here as well. Add like a little dot. And then over here, we can add a few lines over here as well. And then we can add a few lines over here as well. And then a portion of what we need is close to the top. And then we can also add a few small lines just to help indicate that that is indeed a tension spot in the drawing. And by doing that, it also helps add some more detail. And then these spiral shapes that I mentioned before, we can add tension spots to those as well. We can just add a few lines onto that shape that match the contours of the shape. Like a few wrinkles on each side of the beanstalk, both left and right. And maybe like a couple spots in the middle of it. And let me erase these. Okay, so we pretty much got the base of our beanstalk done, but we're not done yet. So, let's think. What else does a beanstalk have? A beanstalk also has leaves. So let's bring back the scenario that you watch a cartoon that has like a Jack and the Beanstalk type story. And whatever it is that you watch has characters that maybe climb a beanstalk. How they climb it, they could methodically climb it like a rock climbing wall or they could use leaves pretty much. There's leaves on both sides of the beanstalk. So we can draw patches of big leaves throughout the beanstalk. So we can draw patches of big leaves attaching to each side of our beanstalk. So I'm gonna do that. Maybe just a curve shape like this. And then this is good, also gonna have some shading, so I'm gonna indicate that with my pencil. Because remember, this is at a worm's eye view, so we're looking up at a leaf. 
okay? So now let's add another one to this side so that way the drawing is kind of balanced. So we can add one just off of here and I'm gonna have it going up and it's gonna cut off so bear with me. Or at least the way I'm drawing it, it's gonna be cut off of the page. Add some shading there. And then adding details to the leaves, that's really all on you. So I'm gonna try to put, press a little bit harder so that way you guys can see what I'm doing. Okay, so we got our leaves. What else does a beanstalk have? So, since a beanstalk is a plant, it may have just a few pieces of stem sticking out from each side. You know, kind of like where the leaves are, but like a lot smaller. So like, it's another way to add some detail. So what I'm gonna do is like add like a little swirly pattern like this. Well, not a pattern, but it can be used to indicate that there are some strands of stems all throughout the beanstalk. Like, I don't know each and every part of every plant, but I'm trying to do my best to, you know, give you a visual representation in case what I'm saying doesn't make sense. So like, I'm gonna call that a strand, but really what I'm seeing in my head looks like a piece of hair when you think about it. So hold on, let me zoom in so I can show you guys what I'm talking about. So a piece that looks like that. So we're gonna draw pieces of the beanstalk that stick out and looks like this. Just a little swirl, didn't have to be nothing fancy, but you can make it kind of thick as it comes out of the beanstalk. And then the line width can be super thin as you come out. Something like that. So we can do that throughout. I'm just gonna make like a few. Alright, so now let me zoom back out. And there, we got us our beanstalk. And there we go, we got our beanstalk. So really, if there's anything else that you wanna add to this beanstalk, do it now while we're in the sketching phase. But as of now, I'm gonna take my ink pen, start inking it, and then I'm gonna show you how I add color to this thing. So let's go. All right, and there is our inked. So now let me zoom in, cause now we won't need our perspective points anymore. So let's zoom in, and then I can show you guys how to color it. So, to color this beanstalk, obviously I'm going to use markers. Now these are two different marker brands here, and I'm gonna go through each of them so I can show you guys exactly what I'm using. So I'm gonna be using the Prism Color and the Copic brand markers. For the Prismacolor, my base color is green tea. It's number 197. I'm using a Copic marker, G24. And then I'm using another Copic marker, that's YG67. I'm using another Prismacolor marker, it's number 28, uh, dark olive green. And then I'm gonna use another Copic marker, it's slate, BV29. And these markers are in order by value. So this will be the lightest color, so this is obviously my base. And then BB29, that's my darkest color. And this is gonna be the marker that I'm gonna use to add most of my shades. So, let's begin. So I'm gonna take my Prisma color 197 and just add a base color to this thing. So we got our base color down, and now we can add just one of our mid-tones, which is G24. And hopefully this won't dry out on me but it's got close to the same value as our base color, which will help with blending the other colors. So now let me use my other mid-tone, which is YG67. And I believe this color is close enough to the base color, so that way I can blend. And then we can also add this color to our details that we added, like here and here. And then right there where the tension spots are, we can add details to those. Add some shadow past the dirt. And then let's go back up here and add that to the leaves. So now, 
Let's try to blend that with our base color. Okay, so now that we got most of it colored already, now we can begin adding some contrast. So now we can go in with one of our dark colors, which is our 28 dark olive green Prismacolor. And right here, right now is where we can determine our light source. Or if you already have it determined, then great. But you have to have it determined before you get to this stage and begin adding your shades. So let's make our light source right here, up here in the top left hand corner. So that means our shades will be in the right corner. So let's apply this color to the right hand side. And then, since this is at a worm's eye view, I'm still considering that we can add most of this color to this leaf. Because from this point of view, this part of the leaf will be dark. So just a little something to think about. And then, where else? Over here at the bottom of this little spiral shape. Spiral stem-ish. And then, again, towards the right is where our shades are going to go. Okay, so now let's take our YG67 and blend it back into the initial base color. Okay, now we can go back in with our base color and blend that together. Okay, and now let's go in with our darkest color, which is this BV29. So we can apply this color the same places where we applied our Prismacolor 28. We're not going to apply a big, huge, large amount of this ink to those areas. We want contrast, but we don't want way too much contrast. So just to help indicate that the dark, darkest areas compared to the base color are shaded, if that makes sense. And now, since we added our darkest, darkest shade, we can work backwards and blend everything together. So I'm going to take my Prismacolor 28 again. And blend that gray color in with the green. And then I'm going to try to add this color again to those uh, tension spots or wrinkles actually because the color kind of disappeared as I blended the other colors. So let's keep pushing that, make sure it's still visible. Okay, and then YG67 again. As like another step further into blending everything together. Okay, and now our final color would be our base color. All right, and there is our beanstalk. Now we gotta do one more thing, one more thing take our white colored pencil and add some highlights. All right, and there you go. That's how you draw and color a beanstalk in one, two, three point perspective. And as usual, all the supplies that I use will be in the description down below. And all the marker colors that I use to color in the beanstalk specifically will pop up on the screen somewhere. But if you like the video or if you find it useful, give it a like and a comment. Subscribe if you haven't and tap the notification bell so you never miss an upload. And I'll see you in my next video. I can't let a nigga like